Okay, I'm just gonna do a quick little tour. Uh, basically, the plane is finished, ready to fly. Uh, just waiting on a hiccup with Transport Canada. They haven't signed off the paperwork uh, for the MDR inspector, so anybody that's had inspections right now, we're all in limbo waiting for papers from Transport to be able to get flight authority. So anyway, here it sits, ready to go. And I'll take you through a little bit uh, front and tail, I guess. So this is how I got the cowling. You can see how the fit is with the rad and such. Had to trim this back just to make sure I had a nice good seal in here on the rad. And then you can see the gap I have on this side versus the gap I've got on that side. Again, quite drastic, but I wasn't gonna change it. Uh, here is the scoop of the Natka duck going in for the turbo. And it's a Cato 84 by 41 prop. So we'll see how that, uh, that works. I've since uh, put nitrogen in, nitrogen in the cylinders. I had to put uh, a fair bit more. I think I'm running about 335, 340 right now in them. So I had to get set up with a regulator. I've got the system over here. So I got the regulator set up in the fittings so that I can actually fill up the cylinders and adjust them as need be. Uh, nothing too special going on down there. Just the gear legs are fared. I've got the solid piece in here, which I haven't put on I will later if I feel it's necessary for people to step in. Um, back part, luggage is done. I just got to put the rug carpet in the bottom. You see how the valves clear and what they look like. Again, I might shorten these after the fact to see um, if I never decide to fold the wings again. But right now the wings are foldable as they are without any issues. Um, here's a panel. So I got all labels on it now. So I got uh, Main boost, main boost pump, I guess, which is always on. Uh, sorry, I'll call the auxiliary boost pump, which is always on. And I got the main boost pump for switch for takeoff and landings. I got my ignitions here. Uh, I got a key basically wired to the start button so that this becomes hot for push starting. Ultimately, I could take the key out once the engine's running. I've got a master, which when I turn the master on, it turns the pump on. So the first thing I do is I turn on the actual backup battery system. Uh, which is in the tail and that's how I load up the EFIS while it's going and then I'll get belted and everything else will be basically good once I get to um, to that point and everything's ready to go I'll uh, pull the choke pull the master on boost pump will automatically pressurize the system and I can press the start button of course make sure mags or ignitions are on so so that's what uh, what that looks like. So then I've got um, this EFIS switch really isn't, almost isn't needed. I mean, the only way this is is gonna be needed is if the auxiliary battery dies uh, because ultimately the power system uh, draws from the main as soon as you turn on the, uh, the master here anyway, it'll turn the EFIS on. So I've got this on from a power switch, but uh, it's just more of a turn it on, but it's not, you're not seeing any difference when you do. I'll just enter this. Uh, and then I got strobes, uh, nav lights, and landing lights. So if I, uh, the strobes are right, are nice and bright, and then the nav lights, of course I gotta turn on my master first. Turn the pump, so you can hear the pump start, so I just pull the breaker on that. So that's what I got for the, for the lights inside. The landing light, which is uh, very bright, and a flasher on it, so that's what that all looks like. I can turn that off. I got the dimmer over here. So when I turn the nav, I can dim all the lights and it also dims the EFIS at the same time and, and dims this. So everything's just on one dimmer. I didn't know if it was gonna work or not, but it actually, we'll sign out when I fly it at night, see how it is. But it seems okay for right now anyway. The way it dims the EFIS, I turn that on, you'll see the EFIS comes back bright again. So I got auxiliary batteries, the two batteries in there, which you'll see the power of each battery in here. If I shut the master off, you'll see that the voltage drops to nothing and uh, the voltage on the auxiliary that's working. Uh, Garmin radio, the 200 and the 327. Transponder, I got the trim here. Uh, choke, park brake, and cabin heat. And then over here I've got all my breakers, right? So you can, uh, everything that's you know important I've got basically on there is how that works, so. Um, 
That's about it really there. Uh, I put a fan on the top and you can see for defrost. So I've made this, put the hole in and fitted this, seems to fit pretty nice. And I've got the front uh, rubber on the edge there. And of course for the test phase, I can't have passengers. So that's my sticker for that. You can see I marked my fuel levels and such for where I'm at for fuel. Um, yeah, nothing real special going on anywhere else, I guess. Temperature probes, you can see how all of the connections are here. Um, just do a quick walk around, call sign, a few stickers. Here you can see the trim system that I've put in. So the servo's in there, built that fairing, so it seems to work pretty good. Hopefully, we'll find out. Um, again, I've got the uh, larger flying wires per Troy for the 1500 gross that I've got it set at. Uh, ELT's in there, I've got an access to be able to get into that spot. i got a drain here and a drain in right there for the, right out of the gas later. So that's what that's about, ELT antenna. And nothing much else on this side, so that's it. That's all. Not much to talk about here, so just gonna wait and hang tight. These are work worked out quite well. I'm quite happy with how all the slats are. So I just got the single bumper. It seemed to work. There's just a slight gap between everything when they're in. So so yeah. Well, that's it. So there's the RV10, where I just was minus 20 Celsius today, and I just went out for a nice cruise all around, and didn't even need a jacket on inside. It was it was so cabin heat works so well. So I doubt it will be the same in this airplane. It'll be freezing my butt off, but uh, that's all right. I'll put a snowsuit on and go out and enjoy it. Just get up top so you can see maybe how the whole fittings work. There's the tank covers, fuel tank caps, antenna. That's how the windshield basically frames in and the top dash. So. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with what it turned out. Hopefully it flies as good as it looks. And if it done, doesn't, well, I'm sure I'll enjoy it just the same. So, All right, take care. Happy flying.